what we're gonna do today is we're gonna take a DJ set that has been prepared in Ableton and import it into Recordbox so we can put it on USB stick and play with our friends on CDJs. So here you see I have this Ableton set and it has a ton of tracks. Um, if you look in the clip view, they look kind of like this. So they have these warp markers which are being used as cue points. Um, I think a lot of Ableton DJs actually do this. So um, here's Recordbox. I just downloaded the free trial. There are zero songs in it. And um, you'll notice that if I want to like import one track, I can just drag and drop. Cool. But um, what's annoying is that I found if you want to do like multiple tracks like this, um, these aren't draggable objects. So instead, what we can do is we can say um, show in Finder, and then this opens up a window with like all these files as well as the Ableton analysis files. Um, cool. So now we can just select them all, and hopefully, oh fuck, that's a lot of songs. Um, drag and drop these in. Cool, and so that's going to import and analyze them. So that's going to take a long time to import. Um, in the meantime, we're going to download the script which I use to automatically convert the warp markers into record box cue points. You can find this on GitHub, which is where I put most of my code, and uh, snag a link to this in the YouTube description for this video. So once um, I find the script and download it and make sure I have Python 3. So let's just uh, let's just look at it really quickly to m see what it's doing. So what we're gonna do is, uh, oh yeah, so I should mention uh, Mr. Bill and I found this cool fact, which is that ableton.als files are actually just compressed XML files. That might sound like total nothing to some of you, but basically XML is a file format that it's very easy for computers to work with, and especially Python, which has a nice built-in XML library. So what this means is that um, we can take gzip and unzip the ALS file, and then we can just kind of use Python to look look into it and look for audio clips, which are the tracks in our DJ set. And then because Recordbox also supports XML as an export import format, we can then just very easily with like 10 lines of code convert all of the um, all of the Ableton warp markers into Recordbox cues. So actually let's go back to Recordbox because by now our library has finished importing. Um, as you can see, I have a lot of tracks, but none of them have warp markers, so I can't play a sick B2B set with my friend yet. So um, this is a little clunky, and I apologize, but it's the best way I found to do this. What we can do is say, go to Recordbox and say export collection as XML, and let's just call it like uh, recordbox.xml. Cool, and that's saved in documents. Right. And now let's go back to Python. So this script tells you how to use it. Basically you call Python and then the name of the script. Um, and then the first input is the ALS file and the second one is the record box input file. So let's just run it and see what happens. Python 3, uh, Ableton cues.py, and then this set is called LinkedIn2018.als. Um, and the record box XML, we called it record box XML. Cool. So this output shows that it went through and it found a bunch of audio clips and it hopefully converted them into, um, into cue points. So, um, it writes the output to this file called output.xml. We can just look at it. So now this is a record box XML file, which you can put back in a record box and I'll show you how that works. So we go to record box and we go to preferences. We want to show, okay. So in layout, we want to show 
this so we can see what we've just imported after we do the next step. Cool. And then in advanced, uh, this is a bit slow, in advanced we say we want to import a library. So what we're going to import is the file that we just created in Python. And then what do we call this? We call it record box scripts output.xml. Cool. So hopefully that worked. And then you can see now that there's this um, record box XML thing here. And let's look at our tracks. Voila, you can see that in some of these, there are indeed cue points. So let's load up one. Uh, let's load up one by our friend Spoken Bird. Do, 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 it already exists. Exists. Yeah, awesome. All right, we got cue points here. Cue point at B. Yeah, so all right, that looks pretty good, right? Um, this is roughly where our cue points in record box were. You can see it's a little bit off, and that's probably, I think, due to Ableton warping, like shifting the time a little bit off from the record box grid, but um, not a big deal if you use quantize, because it'll snap to the nearest down, uh, nearest beat. Um, now let's just look at another one, this Minnesota track, for instance, and you can see there's Q point here, Q point at 49, um, and we can find Snake Charmer. Yes, yes, cool, yeah, and you see one here and then one over, all the way over here. Um, cool, and then so to get these back into your main library, um, I think you can say select all, but if not, just, you know, scroll down highlight all of these and then drag them, drag and drop them back into your collection. Uh, say yes to that. Do, do, do. So this will import all of these back into record box, your main collection in record box. And voila, there are cue points on these tracks that were in my Ableton set but not necessarily the ones that weren't in this specific set. So yeah, I hope that was helpful to you guys. Pretty stoked this worked on the first try. And if you like this video, um, let me know and I'll probably make more at some point. All right, see ya.